heavily prevalent in this in this book is actually the idea of like colloquialism is the idea of color Colin is the idea of colonial colonialism. I can't say that hey friends, welcome and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Adana, and on this channel we talk about all things stories and self-care. So today I am super super excited to come to you guys with a book review. I haven't done one of those in a while, and honestly, it's because I just haven't read a book that I felt like really truly enamored with in a while. However, that all changed when I came across Against the Loveless World by Susan Abu Hawa. Let me tell you, this is honestly one of the most heart-wrenching, one of the most kick in the gut, and one of the most leaves you uncontrollably crying types of books and I loved every single minute of it. This book came out in I believe 2020 and although I'm a little late to the party I thought that it would be helpful for you guys to kind of walk through this book including the synopsis, talking about some of the key themes or motifs that are really prevalent in this book, look over and kind of analyze the book cover art and what it actually means, talk about some of my favorite characters and some of the characters that I really resonated with and then also wrap it up with the rating and who I think this book actually would be good for. So if you are interested at all in learning more about what I thought about this particular book, then definitely keep watching. So as I said, this book came out in 2020 and this is the third novel by Susan. It is again, like I said, a literary fiction book about the plight and honestly the struggle of the Palestinian people. And so it begins with our main character, Nair, who is born in Kuwait and um, she's really reflecting on some of the dramatic events that happened in her life. So we actually open up the book with her actually in prison and she's in what is called the cube and it's solitary confinement. So she doesn't have access to the outside world and she kind of really loses the sense of time and what is actually going on outside of her world. But that gives her a lot of time to reflect on some of the journeys and the different decisions that she made and which led her to the current position that she's in. So as we are hearing her narrate her life, we understand how she was able to get her name, how she was able to get her birth name, and then the following names after that that lead to who she is as a person. We also follow her life in Kuwait and how it started off as a beautiful story, it's a beautiful experience, but then it quickly honestly devolved into chaos. And we see how she falls in love with a man that she thinks is the love of her life and she just thinks that he's perfect, but shortly after, again, chaos ensues and he ends up leaving her. And um, with her family, teetering on the brink of poverty, she decides to make some really hard choices and in a way is tricked into prostitution, but then chooses to remain in prostitution to again, help her family. And so that is yet again, another harsh reality of her life. If that's not enough, then of course, the US decides to invade Iraq and she's forced to become a political refugee just like her parents were before her and her grandparents were before them. And it is really sad and it's really disorienting for her. So she ends up moving to Jordan out of Kuwait. And in her mind, Jordan is not as beautiful as Kuwait. It is um, depressing and it's just, it's just different. And um, she really struggles with that, even though her family is used to this and used to being refugees. And so they quickly are able to find, you know, their new paths within Jordan and just kind of move on as, as refugees. But then again, she's alone with her thoughts and she's just really unhappy. So her mother and brother end up urging her to go to Palestine so that she can officially go back to Palestine so that she can officially go and get a divorce from that man that left her. And, um, for her, it's an opportunity to start over and start a new life. Surprisingly though, when she's there, she ends up falling in love with a surprising character and it then lights this fire within her that was there all along but wasn't really centered into something. As she's going through this relationship, she's exploring who she is as an individual person. Her destiny is then ultimately unfolding and she ends up taking actions that then, as we wrap up the story, lead her to why she's in solitary confinement. So it's an awesome, awesome book, an awesome story. Again, heart-wrenching and I can't really go into specifics of why it's heart wrenching without spoiling the story, but just an interesting life that was lived by Nair. So in terms of book cover art, I think that this book is 
beautiful. I have a copy from my library, of course, so it has the plastic wrapping on it. So it's a little, maybe a little hard to see with the, um, with the glare, but really, really beautiful. It is very intriguing and it's honestly kind of abstract. When I first saw it, I, I didn't really know what to expect. I thought it was just an abstract kind of cover. But then once you read the story, you kind of realize that this is, and to me at least, it is signifying a vast universe that we are all living under. Also with like the, the pinks and the oranges, it's kind of reminding me of like a desert uh, sunset. So, um, you know, I guess in the Middle East, those senses are really pretty and beautiful. So it just reminds me of a combination of like this big, vast world that we're living in. And then also the beauty of that, an, an ode to the beauty of that specific area, um, that Palestinian, just Middle Eastern area. So yeah, I, I loved it. I thought that it just was a gorgeous cover. And I can't remember if there are multiple covers or if it's just this one. I, I feel like I saw another cover and, I, and I'll, I'll put on the screen if I did see another cover, what that cover is and how it differs from this one. But I believe this is the US version. And um, if there is an, an, another version, then I will, I will add that here. So in terms of key themes or you know tropes or like motifs, there are quite a few that are prevalent within this book. And one very big one that I noticed was the idea of double identities. So Nair has a couple of different identities. She is born with one name and then she has Nair as another name and then she has another name as she's going through her life. And so those three names or four if you count like the pet names that her um, her brother and her family call her those are all who she is and they contribute to the identity of who this person is and so it, it just makes me think of identity is really clearly linked to our names and how one person one name that someone gives you can have a different meaning than some another name that someone gives you you know in terms of a pet name or a nickname but they are still true to who you are as a person and so I thought that was very interesting that she had multiple identities, but she was still the same person. She also has an identity as the breadwinner of her family for a time. In that area, it's very common for, you know, it's a very patriarchal society. So men are often the ones that take care of their, their families. And so in this case, Nair is actually taking on that identity of being the breadwinner. She's taking on unconventional an unconventional role and an unconventional job in which to be able to provide that support to her family. So I thought that was actually really interesting and very apparent within this story. And then we also see this identity of her as a political leader or someone that is of, maybe not of significance within that political community, but definitely is a leader in her own right. It has her own way of thinking, her own opinions for how the resist resistance should be carried out. And she has her own actions that she carries out that makes her respected for what she's done and what and who she is. Is as a person so and that contributes to her identity as well so i thought that that was super interesting the second theme or motif that is really prevalent is the idea of colonialism and military occupation the idea of another country or another group taking over what you know as your homeland and what you know as the area of your ancestors and what is the right that you have as a citizen of that particular area and how other outside forces whether it be the us whether it be israel whether it be whatever other areas them coming in and from her perspective from the pal palestinian perspective what that actually means how do you actually live under military surveillance constantly what does it mean to live under the oppression of you can't go outside of your home you have curfews that are imposed on you like how does how do you move and live and still find joy and beauty in a life where you don't have that control as a citizen of that place or what you consider an owner of that place so i thought that that was really really truly a huge key theme that was explained beautifully from that different perspective that I don't necessarily understand or have never had that lived experience. So I thought the author did a really good job of kind of playing that experience out and having others be able to see a different experience than they would have thought. And then third, that kind of leads me to the third key theme or motif is really honestly the shared experiences that we all have as human beings. We can understand that there are beauty in different 
different areas and, and the differences in which we have. But a lot of times, you know, media or outside forces don't necessarily show that, that beauty. There was a human element that was brought through in this story and one that I have not seen when they're talking about this particular area or this particular topic. And it really truly just helped show a different narrative that isn't necessarily shown within the broader media. So in terms of my favorite character, definitely Nair. Like, I don't know that anyone wouldn't love Nair. She is a phenomenal, phenomenal woman. And I was really like, you you are my hero. You truly are my hero. Even so much to the point where when I looked at the Goodreads reviews, just trying to see like, what other people thought about this. I saw that the author actually wrote, I love my hair. And I cannot agree more. She is honestly my favorite character and she truly is the backbone of this story. She, I imagine is very much, she can be that role model or that individual that people look up to when talking about this particular topic. So love my hair, A plus, five out of five, out of five. like love her. Roses, roses, I love her. In terms of a rating, I really enjoyed this book. So no surprise, I gave it five out of five stars. This has all of the good makings of a good literary fiction. One, it made me cry, like sobbed, like in fetal position, so good. Second, it has a flawed character that you ultimately, by the end of the book, you come to really fiercely be super protective of. Every time I turned a page, I felt a little bit closer to her, a little bit like, ah, now I see why you're why you're doing this. I see why this particular action led you to be in this predicament. And you just feel very, again, enamored with, you, you feel like you know her, you feel like you can see her in your everyday life. And to that point, when you see these events happen in her, you, you start to feel very protective of her. So that's number uh, number two. Number three, a very interesting, honestly, hook to the beginning of the book. So the book actually opens up with the first line being, I live in the queue. I write on its glossy gray cinder block walls however I can, with my nails before, with pencils now, though the guards bring me some supplies. Like you just hook someone in. It's like, what is the cube? Why are you writing with your nails? Like, why are you using, like, it's just like, what is happening here? And it, it makes me, makes you want to like learn more about the story. You then become invested in it. And I just loved that hook. I thought that it was really super intriguing. And for me, it helped me to honestly get through this book super, super quickly because I was like, what is happening? Like, what is going on? So loved it. And then also a lot of literary fictions have a love story story or romance as like a secondary plot. And so for this one, this was definitely a story that was filled with more than just romance. Um, we see some nuance and some development of the characters individually and then also together that brings, you know, us as, as readers to an understanding of why are these two people actually a good fit? Why are, you know, how do they complement each other in a way that is actually meaningful um, and actually it brings meaning to the world as a whole. I just love that it was not, there definitely is a romance aspect to this book, but it is not the overarching aspect of this book. And so for that, I truly loved it. And it, it really did complement the story very, very well. All right, so that is it. That is my review, including a summary, favorite character, key themes, motifs, cover of the book, and then also what I rated it. If you have read this book, definitely leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought. Do you think that I was kind of spot on with some of the key themes that were prevalent? Do you think that I did a good job of summarizing it and without spoiling it too much? What did you think about the cover? I'm really su super interested to see what some of your interpretations of the cover and what it actually meant. And then also, do you think I rated this too highly or do you think that it was it, it's spot on? It de deserved every single star and half star that it got. I'm really curious to know what your thoughts are. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. By giving it a thumbs up, it helps to put this channel in front of more viewers like yourself that love to read diverse stories. So that's black, indigenous, persons of color, women, authors in, you know, just stories from those communities. So if you like this, it definitely puts this channel in front of more people like yourself who might be looking for this type of content. And if you are new and you like what you see and you haven't yet subscribed, definitely subscribe down below and hit the notification bell so that you're notified of every single time that I upload. But that is it for me today. Like Susan said, I love Nair and I hope that, that you either loved her as well or that you consider reading her for your next book. But I will see you in my next video. Bye.